Daniel. Lemmings. <laughs> what do we got? Uh, this is a gift from the titan of whiskey, Jeffrey Petrone. Daniel, in the distance, do you hear that? I smell it. A remedy. I'm back to what you said. It's Petricor. Damn it. <laughs> Cheers, you magnificent <coughs> bastards. <laughs> Jeffrey's gotten plenty of plenty of unadulterated ones. It's time for some ball busting. All right, oh, this look, is... I floated this idea to Fancy Dan. Because whenever, it, especially when we have episodes, like on Rare Whiskey Friday, where there's back-to-back -back different titans. Right. It's like, well, how do you feel about short? No, we're not going to cut anything. Yeah. It has the full sequence of events to happen. But maybe the way we differentiate between, you know, original Titan and then the levels above Titan, maybe level one, mm. and then every subsequent Titan animation for a bottle that you get, we speed it up by 10%. <laughs> so if, <laughs> so if they feel like Titan level whiskeys plus nine, it's like nine. <laughs> <laughs> and then when it cuts to them, it'll be in real time speed. Yeah. I don't know. I think it'd be pretty funny. I think it'd be funny. I think we're going to have to ask the Titans to vote on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, right, so this is Virginia Gentleman. Yes. And uh, I'm wary of <laughs> anything with the word gentleman. So this is the uh, A. Smith Bowman distillery okay. in, Kentucky, in okay. Virginia. Uh, what they've been doing is they source Kentucky whiskey. Yeah. Uh, currently coming from Buffalo Trace. Okay. Yep. But they source the low wines. Hmm. So the stripping run. Okay. Right? So they source a stripping run. Yeah. And, and Which totally makes me want to do this with one of the Texas distilleries. Because they, well, this is, because the distillery you're getting the whiskey from, mm -hmm. they have a lot less time invested. Yeah, and there's no cuts on a stripping run right. other than this, like, like, there's nothing left in there. Right. Stop it. So it's not like you're paying yeah. for them to keep distilling it, processing it, dialing it in, finessing it. You're yeah, just, just getting like, that strip first run, off. strip it off, and then that's interesting. Right? Oh. So they get, and this is why, I mean, I've heard that this is like budget bourbon, but. Well, but. but oh, go ahead, go ahead. The idea, I think, is really cool. I, and then that low wine comes into the uh, Bowman Distillery, and they run it through a call a pot still that is essentially a doubler. Okay. And uh, I don't Luke know. Bryson uh, talks about it actually a whole page. What's a doubler? A du so in bourbon stills, you might start with a column to right. basically do the stripping run. Sure. And then you use a essentially a pot still okay. to do the second run. Okay. And so it's it's starts on a column, finishes on a pot. Right. Even though it's not technically a pot still like you would think. Okay. And it's often referred to as the doubler. All right. Right? All right. And uh, anyway, so they essentially use a giant doubler they call Mary, and it's got this really unique shape to it. Mm -hmm. And then they're making Virginia gentlemen budget now bourbon. Before you had mentioned any kind of the pedigree stuff, on the nose, I'm getting some some shiny graininess, but also there's a nice depth to the notes in the character. I just get shiny vanilla cream soda. No, I'm getting some more. Oh, I'll there's like, a little wood note in there. There you go. There's some wood note, but I'm saying. The fact that it has this Buffalo Trace mm -hmm. kind of origins, and then they start messing with it. Um, there's, I got a nicer nose than what I, was, what I was expecting based on the bottle and the name and the screw cap, plastic screw cap. Uh, yeah, that's the curve I'm, I was grading on originally. When I, I don't read. know that it's starting at the Buffalo Trace distillery, but it's all owned by Sazerac Fine. and, right. But I'm saying I'm still on the nose, and what I was prepared, prepared words with my face. 
prepared for based on, again, the label and the, the bottle. Cap. This is like the most It's a $10 generic, bottle over then. Yeah, and then the plastic cap. I was like, okay, I, I have a ballpark framework for those kinds of whiskey experiences. It was just a little nicer on the nose though. I had more depth and variety of flavors. Oh, it just tastes like very sweet bourbon. Yeah, I'm getting um, Did almost you take a sip of it. Almost like I'm almost getting like a multi sweetness with that yeah. corn sweetness. I'm getting a sweet tea bourbon. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? It's perfectly fine yeah. with that added layer of a little bit of shininess. And I gotta say, at ten dollars, where this is competing with some truly, is that ten dollars? Truly depressing products. Right. This is that's definitely I think one of the better ten dollar right? options out there. Yeah. 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 The finish leaves quite a bit to, to be desired, quite frankly. I think it yeah. turns, the only thing you're really left with is like this dry, almost bitterness. But leading up to it, there's some classic notes. Again, grading on the $10 curve. There's some classic notes, kind of thin. There's an ethanol, la ethanol layer, but there's the honey, sweet tea, oakiness that I'm you're gonna over. find very, very commonly in a lot of bourbons. But- I'm looking over yeah. here for another budget. Kentucky origin. Honestly, I think if this was even like twenty-five to thirty dollars, it'd still be okay. Really? Yeah. I mean, for me, it had to be under twenty. It, no, I'm saying if this was twenty-five to thirty dollars, we'd be like, nah. There's a lot better oh, okay. options out there. I didn't there. let you finish that sentence. But where that shows up, I don't uh, think that's ever happened before. Where that? Yeah. We, we always let each other finish all of our complete thoughts. <laughs> where that's showing what was up. What that? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good option, I think. So. This is a budget early times. That's more shiny, more yeah. ethanol on the nose for sure. Wow, I mean, I'm struggling to find anything past that ethanol bright alcohol. Yeah, it's very, and it's almost nose. apple-y, like, like apple juicy kind of note. Yeah, man. Like if I gotta go for budget, <laughs> it's significantly better. I can, I could deal with that if I had to, a camping trip or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. For how much it costs, mm -hmm. it's surprisingly good when compared to other options at that price point. Yeah, Franklin Scott, my wife just asked me if Daniel was the guy from My Cat from Hell. I had to look that up. What is it's My this Cat guy, from Hell? So you remember the guy who goes in and fixes problem dogs? Uh, the, the Caesar, Caesar, Caesar yeah, yeah. the dog whisperer. This is the, the cat guy? That's a harder job. <laughs> right? <laughs> and look, like if you just classify cat people as their own breed, Right. Versus dog people. Oh, yeah. This dude is definitely the kind of guy who'd be like, yeah, you're a guy who fixes cats. <laughs> <laughs> when Wait, she so mistook you... me for that guy, I was like, I went and looked him up. I'm like, oh, that's, that's not good. I mean, he's bald. That's is the that only it? thing we have in common. Okay. He's bald and we both have facial hair. But <laughs> here's the thing. Right. His is shorter and I'm pretty sure dyed black. <laughs> and it's cut into shapes. Oh. Like, you remember when you used to, and like. Wait, did you ever watch Community? No. Starburns. Here's a guy that has a star. His sideburns like cut it into the yeah. stars. It's that family. It's in that family. And this is the guy. Starburns, the like, cat whisperer. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable being compared to that guy. I don't know. Man, I'm like, a fan of a cat. I have compared you to a lot less flattering things. That's true. But those are so ridiculous. This one's. Is it a little too close to home? Also bald. And... A little too close to home there? Yeah. A little too close to home? Uh, Caleb J. Rex, I know you're a fan of The Office. Uh, your Splenda comment yesterday made me think of Michael's Scotch and Splenda. Tastes like Splenda, get you drunk like Scotch. <laughs> it's really I've good. never seen The Office. What? But Dude! Oh my gosh, man. Oh my gosh. So many good, amazing moments. Okay. I think he uses Johnny Walker Black and I think you need to try it. So we don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to do an episode on whiskeys and fake sweeteners? I mean, we can. We don't have any Splenda here, so we totally do that. But that could be. I could go across the thing and can get one. There's Splenda. You want a Splenda? Go get a Splenda. Get a lot of Splenda. No. Because no. Oh, because it has to right. not taste Michael, like whiskey. Right, Michael Scotch. So much Splenda. Dan, sorry, this is all on mic. All right, Caleb J. We got your back, buddy. Totally gonna do this. I'm gonna chill out well. You know what though? I mean, you know. We get it? Johnny Walker Black? Ah, uh, yes, we'll get the Johnny Walker Black there. It's, uh... 
That's the black 12. There's the generic. Well, they're all 12. I was right. Get that one. I think this is already fancier than what he would do. What he would do. All right. All right, let's get all of the Splenda. How many? How many? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Splenda. Obviously. You probably don't need more than two. No, dude. I'm telling you. Would you want this to be true to form? Is he really dump? How much Splenda these dump into it? A comedic amount, Daniel. Okay. <laughs> it's not an actual documentary. It, uh, wait, what? <laughs> Did I spoil the show? I just didn't ever watch it because I don't think a paper documentary is that interesting. I didn't realize you were so into paper products. Spoken like a true cat guy. <laughs> cat wrangler is what I prefer. You got the Johnny Walker. This is the just the black black twelve year old. Forty percent. That's just so many. This <laughs> so. Wait, here you go. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Okay, I'm gonna finish with that because I'd rather be drinking Johnny Walker Black. Then Virginia gentlemen. I mean, it's gonna. There's gonna be a level of not being able to saturate any more sugar in here, unless we heat the whiskey to get it super saturated. We're not gonna do that. Does it taste like Splenda and get you drunk like Scotch? Michael Scott is also the kind of guy that would drink it from a straw. Oh, totally. You're gonna yeah. sip it up? No, I'm gonna drink it from a straw there. Wow, that is cloudy. All of. It's still a little bit of residue of Splenda in the You bottom. can still spit, you can still pick up the uh... Scotch nuts? Yeah, Scotch nuts, good. Huh. Yeah, still smells like Scotch. It tastes like Splenda gets you drunk like Scotch. I'm getting, I'm just give me a moment. I'm Came trying to get classy. as much of the Splenda in there as possible. If we were mindful of people's time, mm -hmm. we wouldn't do this legitimately, but I'm more curious of what this would taste like than I am respectful of your time. Really Dan's time. Hey, Dan. <laughs> Here we go. So? I mean... Tastes like sugar? Look, it's the level of sweetness I would get out of Diet Coke. Really? Yeah. And it's as effortlessly drinkable as a Diet Coke. You put this much sweetness into a scotch, you can get into trouble in a 40% Johnny Walker blend of scotch. Get you drunk like scotch. You can get into trouble because it doesn't even register as alcohol. You're a spying, stealing drinker. <laughs> you fight me, fight for a friend, Jesus. You have a right You steal, make you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you, you drink, drink with us. us. We need more Splenda. You wanna try that? <laughs>